Hello, I'm Andrea, no, Andrea Pellegrini, PhD student in Computer Science at the University of Michigan. And what I have here is a demo of our RSA attack. So here we have the host that will attack the uh, server, which is right here. The server is a Spar V8 Leon processor, which is running Linux Debian right now. And as you can see, we can actually tune the voltage provided to the microprocessor through this voltage regulator. The nominal voltage is 1.5 volts, which is what is running right now. The system is connected to the host for the network, uh, where actually it has all the network file system and all the files needed uh, to run the operating system. So uh, let's start the demo. So now the voltage is at the nominal value. So if we sign 100 messages, we should receive no corrupted message. Let's do this experiment very quickly. As you can see, the console with the system signing the messages, and as they, uh, as the system signs them, you can see that no signature actually is corrupted. It's going to be done in a few seconds. Okay. So what we're going to do now is lower the voltage such that the system will actually make a mistake every once in a while. As you can see, actually, now we start having some errors here. About 10%. About 10%, correct. With a voltage of 1.27 volts. Unfortunately, this process uh, has to be tuned a little bit because the the amount of errors actually doesn't just depend on the voltage, but it's only on the temperature. Temperature, the system, exactly. voltage, yeah. Exactly. So maybe it's a little bit colder than usual. Sure. So, um, so let's see actually what these corrupted messages entail. Uh, what we do here is analysis of all the 10 messages. And out of these 10 messages that were corrupted, actually five of them were useful to retrieve some information about the RSA private key. That was used. What does it mean they're useful? Uh, what it means is that those corrupted signatures were actually uh, erroneous in, in the terms that only one multiplication was corrupted by a single bit flip. Mm -hmm. So how, how long would you have to run this to break, this is a 128 key, bit key you're, you're doing this? That's correct. Uh, depends actually how many um, uh, messages we retrieve that have a good corrupted signature, which is means mm -hmm. useful. So one multiplication that was corrupted with a single bit flip. Um, we can do, if you have time, another experiment. Sure. Let's and, try a few more. And try actually maybe to get a, a thousand keys. Sure, let's crack it a little harder. Right. So let's give the same voltage thing actually seems to work fine. Okay, yeah, almost a thousand messages with lots of corrupted messages to, to sort through. 18% corrupted messages. Okay, so let's run the analysis and let's see what we find out. Oh, that's already actually it's going pretty well. And as you can see, when we start having more messages, we actually have a higher probability that the corrupted messages will reveal different parts of the key. Right, right. And, uh, Here we've got pretty much the whole key almost done. <laughs> At this point you could probably brute force it. Right. And uh, in this case brute forcing would just mean basically that we have to guess the two. question marks, yeah. Um, exactly. How many are left now? We have about 20 to go. Okay. <clears throat> almost finished. Okay. So we are only left with uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six times four bits? Correct. So 24 so, bits left. Yep. And so if you wanted to not brute force those, you could just run additional corrupted messages. That's correct. And eventually, you know, as, as your luck changed, you would see some coverage of those bits. Right? Absolutely. All right. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you, Andrea. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Bye.